Traditionally, the training of surgeons has been based on an apprenticeship model requiring long hours and lots of practical experience. We now have the opportunity to bring technological advances into surgical training, making it more effective and more efficient. This film is one of a suite of films prepared in support of the HEE simulation-based education strategy and we are pleased to be here at Touch Surgery. They have developed a mobile application that is designed to help the future generation of surgeons get the most out of their training. Touch Surgery is essentially a mobile based application. What it allows users to do, whether they are surgeons, surgical trainees, uh, scrub techs and nurses and other healthcare practitioners, the ability to go through an operation step by step in an interactive, virtual way on their mobile phones. So you've got things like emergency medicine, uh, neurosurgery, orthopaedics, open gynae, so lots of different modalities. You can do things like move your cursor over where you want, for example, the scalpel to cut. Um, they can learn and they can also test themselves. If you're doing the test, for example, you see what you get right and wrong, it will go back and do a little clip um, using the simulation so that you can see where you've gone wrong. So if you've cut in the wrong angle or you've um, put the needle in the wrong place, it will show you. That scoring system has been academically validated so it can distinguish between an expert and a novice. We essentially work with lots of um, different surgeons who have been involved in taking best-in-class surgical procedures and digitising them. I interact with the surgeons to write the storyboards for the simulations. I work specifically in obstetrics and we've created simulations covering caesarean section. We've also created a vaginal birth simulation. We have a, a pretty extensive team, people from a background in building movies, so people who are involved in you know, creating Iron Man and James Bond, to folks who we're involved in the like the matrix to the world of engineering and data and analytics and artificial intelligence. The app-based platform means that trainees can practice and reiterate their learning again and again. Training on the way to work, training as they walk into the operating theatre, updating themselves on the relevant information. You know, we trained as surgeons, so we experienced firsthand the difficulty of learning how to operate, the difficulty of being in an operating room and not fully understanding the steps. Certainly for learning and revising and practicing for exams, it makes it very accessible. We know that we often learn through making mistakes, so I think that's a really good aspect of the application. We've been able to demonstrate um, through lots of independent studies that training on the app translates into better performance in simulated environments. And for the patients, it means that they're receiving the best care. We have a, you know, a strong vision of being able to make kind of surgery um, more available um, and also safer. For me, it's so important when you're a clinician to make sure the care that you're providing is standardised, that you're providing the best care that's available for your patients. When you have doctors who are rotating, they're going to different hospitals, different settings. We lose time and uptake of those skills because they're going to have to repeat their training again and again in different environments to show that they're competent. You can show and train on a standardised level, so it means that we're taking out that loss of resource. And I think we have a big disparity depending where you train, what's available to you and the resources. Using a digital platform, it means that our simulations are quickly scalable. We can reach people all around the world with information that is standardised, evidence-based. Our teams have been going out on global surgery missions to deliver the tool to um, Tanzania and Cambodia. So we've actually scaled up into working with a charity called Assist International and they have rolled out our simulations to places like Rwanda, and you know, I hope that what we've done inspires a lot of other people to um, fix problems um, in healthcare, both you know, for the NHS, but also beyond.